The S5, and the A5 for that matter, have been well received throughout their nearly decade long run. Both models are known for their sensual good looks, and the S5 for its high performance. Now, nine years later, it's time for the sequel. In this review, we're going to cover all versions of the S5, including Premium Plus and Prestige trims, the Cabriolet, and all the available options. So let's go ahead and see if this new modern S5 is a worthy follow-up. We would like to specially thank Audi of Lexington for giving us access to today's vehicle. If you would like to find out more information about their stunning dealership and large inventory of all the Audi models, then follow the link to their website provided in the video description. The Audi Advanced Key is standard, with the newest key fob design, and some extra S badging on the back. To lock the door, just tap the sensor and grab to unlock. Let's start by checking out what's under that long hood. Now right away there is something interesting going on with the hood. As you can see, the hood line comes down lower and lines up with the body line. Just wanted to point that out. So at launch, there is only one way to get the S5. For the engine, it has a 3 liter turbocharged V6 engine, making 354 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. Thanks in part to the new twin scroll turbocharger, Power ratings are up 21 horsepower and 44 pound-feet of torque over the last generation. The S5 also has only one transmission, which is an 8-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission. That's a little bit interesting since the standard A5 can be had with a 6-speed manual, but if demand is there, I'm sure that's something that can change in the future. Power is put to the ground with standard Quattro all-wheel drive. Torque is routed through a self-locking center differential with a basic ratio of 40% to the front and 60% to the rear but that obviously can adjust. As part of the S Sport package, the S5 adds a Sport differential, which can actively split torque between the rear wheels, and that can direct all torque to one wheel if needed.
The switch from supercharging to turbocharging pays big for fuel economy also. The new S5 now gets 21 city, 30 highway, 24 combined, compared to only 21 combined for the outgoing model. The Cabriolet is rated at 1 mile per gallon less. Now that we've seen what powers this high performance coupe, let's check out the new exterior styling and features. The old A5 and S5 were widely praised for their beauty, so for 2018 Audi modernized the design, but without losing the elegance of the first generation. Up front we have a wider and flatter single frame grille. It's got the newest squared off design like the A4, Audi R8, and many others. There's not a lot of differences from the standard A5, but basically the grille is thicker and has more chrome. The lower fascia is also different, since it adds this horizontal chrome line. This is to emphasize the width. All S5s get new fully LED 3D lights as standard equipment. As you can see, the hood is very sculpted and pronounced, more so than on the S4. These 18-inch 5-spoke alloy wheels with the star design are standard for both of the trim levels. 19-inch 5-spoke Cavo designed alloy wheels are optional. They only cost $800, and I think they look well worth that. The brakes are 6-piston 13.8-inch ventilated disc in the front and 13 inches in the rear. The calipers can be red if you have the S Sport package. Summer tires are standard, but all seasons, like what we have here, are a no-cost option. This deep body line is probably the most noticeable change to the side profile. Now coming to the mirrors, they are chrome capped like on all S models. They are also heated, power folding, and auto dimming on both the Premium Plus and Prestige. The S5 is 183.6 inches long which is almost identical to the C-Class Coupe, 4 Series, and Infiniti Q60. That is also 3 inches shorter than the S4. In addition to the aforementioned Sport differential and red brake calipers, the S Sport package includes the Sport Adaptive Dampening Suspension. The system improves driving dynamics by using sensors to measure acceleration and yaw rates. I also want to mention that this vehicle is available in a cabriolet version. Like you've probably noticed by now, they are nearly identical vehicles, but I do want to mention that it weighs 375 pounds more than the coupe, and it takes 15 seconds to open the top at speeds of up to 31 miles per hour. Finally, in regards to safety, there are no official ratings yet, but the very similar Audi A4 achieved the highest rating of a top safety pick plus 2017. It also has Audi Presense basic and city S standard equipment, and that system can automatically brake at speeds up to 52 miles per hour and detect pedestrians. The S5 has a 15.3 gallon fuel tank, and that's good for 367 miles of range. That drops slightly for the Cabriolet at 352 miles. And of course they require premium fuel. The wide rear haunches really give it a great stance. 
As we look towards the rear, the S5 has a nice mixture of sophistication and sportiness. You do get a standard lip spoiler, like on the S4. The taillights also have the newest 3D LED design. Dynamic turn signals are also a nice touch. Obviously, this area is a lot different from the regular A5. And since the exhaust is in dynamic mode, it makes a nice burble. I think that pretty much wraps up the outside, so now let's check out the sporty interior. The exterior change is built upon the successes of the old model, but for the interior, Audi went with a dramatically new look. We have the sporty black interior, with leather and Alcantara seats. This setup can also be had in rotor gray. Both trims have a leather package, which gives you full Nappa leather in those same two colors, plus a magma red option. The standard trim is this brushed matte aluminum, or you can also get Carbon Atlas inlays for an additional $500. The door trim uses the same materials. The armrest is padded, but you don't get leather here unless you have the leather package. The rest of the door trim is soft Alcantara and lovely aluminum. Two-person memory is also standard for the seat, steering wheel, and mirrors. The S5 also gets you sport pedals, which are not available on the A5. The seats receive a big upgrade for 2018, now with 12-way adjusting, pneumatic side bolsters, and even standard massaging. Even though this car is expensive, that's still impressive. You also have manual thigh extension as well. We have the standard Alcantara diamond stitch seat, and the optional seat has the same design, just with the supple Napa leather. The S4 we reviewed a couple weeks ago had it, and I liked it a lot. When you first get in, this mechanism will hand you the seat belt since it would otherwise be a long reach. Looking around the interior, it's obvious there's been a lot of upgrades from the outgoing model. One thing Audi didn't mess with, however, is the excellent material quality. We still have the premium soft touch materials on the upper dash, and then extensive use of real aluminum trim all through the center. There is more aluminum trim through here, and of course everything fits together extremely well. The standard push button start has relocated up here. Now this is the upgraded 8.3 inch MMI screen. The base one is 7 inches, but it's mounted in the same spot. This is virtual cockpit, which is optional on Premium Plus and packaged with the big screen. You'll notice on the S5 you get a large center mounted tack for the first view. Controlling the display uses these buttons, with view collapsing the gauges to emphasize the other stuff. 
You can do almost everything here, including navigate. It doesn't look like Google Maps have been activated yet, but nonetheless, even with the standard map, this is really cool. The S5 has electromechanical speed sensitive power steering, controlled with this great looking flat bottom steering wheel. The optional dynamic steering can change the ratio based on speed and the drive mode selected. These are for virtual cockpit, and these are for pretty much everything else. We have standard paddle shifters and also rain sensing wipers. The steering wheel does manually adjust. This is the standard cruise control system, but adaptive cruise is optional on the Prestige. That light on the side of the mirror is Audi side assist, blind spot monitoring. It is standard on the S5, even though on the equivalent S4, it's optional. Moving on to storage, I'm impressed that nothing in the front is lost when compared to the S4. By the way, this is highly adjustable. Looking inside, there is a decent amount of storage, and two USBs along with an aux jack. There's enough space for your phone up here, plus a 12 volt outlet. This is the new electronic shifter, which is making its way across the entire lineup. It's pretty simple, just pull back for drive. You can shift manually like this, but the paddles are obviously better. For reverse, just go the opposite way. This is the standard backup camera, which has dynamic guidance lines and full parking sensors. The Prestige adds a 360 degree bird's eye camera system. To park, simply press the P. You also have an electronic parking brake, but there's no brake hold feature. Now let's take a listen to the optional 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. I'm very impressed by the sound quality. In front of the shifter is the controller for the MMI system. You can also write on this knob and the presets are at the top. Up here is a row of buttons, the first being for the drive mode selection. There are four modes, including an individual mode. Once in here, you can choose custom settings for the engine and transmission performance, steering feel, and also the exhaust mode. I'll leave that in dynamic mode because I like the raspy growl. A few more buttons are auto start stop, traction control, parking sensors, and the screen power. Above that row of buttons is the standard three zone automatic climate control. Three zones are rare in a sedan, let alone a coupe. The other controls are touch sensitive toggles, which basically preview the functions that each do. This is a really elegant solution. Three stage heated seats are also included standard and ventilated seats are optional now for the MMI system. 
let's take a quick look. I usually put the camera on a tripod, but there's not enough space, so I'll just hold it for today. I apologize in advance for the shakiness. Again, here are the vehicle modes, but clicking into the menu allows you to change a variety of other settings. In the radio, the interface is super simple, with just a big list of stations to choose from. These are the other radio sources. Media is pretty much the same way. And these are the rest of the audio sources you can pick. These shortcut toggles are pretty handy. Once inside the phone, you can use directory to view and find all of your contacts synced over automatically from your phone. You can also write the name on top of the controller. When you first go into navigation, you can do pretty much the same stuff. Now I've got Google Earth activated, and as you can see it's pretty much the same as it is on a computer. The scrolling is exceptionally smooth, especially considering that competitors struggle with much less intense graphics. Audi Connect is where all of the apps live. I don't have time to go through all of these, so if you want to check them out, along with a deep dive into the entire MMI system, then check out our dedicated MMI 2018 Tech Help video. A link to that is provided in the video description. The last thing will be the smartphone interface. Android Auto or Apple CarPlay will be here when you plug in a compatible device via the USB port. These are also covered in detail in that Tech Help video. All S5s get this auto dimming mirror with the nice frameless design and a compass. Another nice feature is the standard panoramic moonroof. The sunshade is power operated. The moonroof itself does open, which is apparently something the last gens couldn't do. And I almost forgot, the Homelink garage door openers are up here. The S5's cabin is pretty impressive. It has great materials, paired with a very modern design, and lots of state-of-the-art technology to back up that look. Overall, the S5's cabin is a big leap forward. Now I'll show you the rest of the car. I love how solid that door sounds when it shuts. Inside the trunk of the S5 Coupe, you have 11.6 cubic feet of cargo capacity, which is larger than the Infiniti Q60, Lexus RC, and Mercedes C-Class Coupe. For the Cabriolet, that falls to 9.3 cubic feet, and 7.2 cubic feet when the top is down. As you can see, the seats do fold, so there's not much given up when compared to the S4. The back seats, however, do have some sacrifices, though. So to get back there, first pull this string. Now just press the forward arrow, and the seat will move up as far as it can.
Now granted the seat is all the way forward, but leg space is actually quite good. Foot space as well. One of the neat things about this coupe is that the rear occupants get their own climate zone. I don't think I've ever seen this in a coupe before, and some of the rivals don't even have vents back here. You also have a 12 volt outlet. There is a center armrest that folds down. Inside is some storage, though I have no idea what you could actually stick in here. The cup holders are off to the side, and the trim pieces are the same as in the front. Overall, it's surprisingly comfortable back here. This is kind of nitpicky, but rival seats move back automatically. That aside, the passenger seat does get all the same goodies as the driver's, even the massaging function. This side has the seatbelt thing as well. The glove box is dampened and felt lined. This is also where Audi keeps the CD player and the SD slots for music. Overall, the typical lovely Audi cabin. Well, that's it for the 2018 Audi S5 review. We hope you enjoyed, and if this helped you, then please help us out by subscribing to Car Confections. We cover more brands than ever, so join us again as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.